degree of post-election reality for folks who ran for office. And kudos to everyone who ran and everyone who lost. And I'm very sorry for people who feel like they lost on Tuesday. Well, there are people who have put up the yeoman's task time and time again trying to do the right thing and, and run against pretty insurmountable odds when everybody that the major parties approves of is basically cut from the same cloth. And joining us right now from West Virginia is the Mountain Party candidate for governor down there, Jesse Johnson, who says he's going to keep running for governor of the great state of West by God, Virginia, until somebody hears the fact that the day he was born, there were 500 more mountains in Appalachia than there are right now. And mountaintop removal and other just absolutely devastating practices for greed are destroying his state and consequently our environment. Uh, Jesse Johnson, welcome back to the Pulse Morning Show. Uh, thank you all so much. Are you, you get any rest yet? Uh, actually, I have. I've been resting on and off for the last, well, since the, <laughs> since the uh, end of the day when the polls closed and uh, re recharging my batteries to try to re-enter the human race. One of the reasons we reached out to you was because uh, some people were saying, wow, even West Virginia elected a Democrat. The world has changed. Well, that Democrat's about as, uh, it's like electing uh, Yosemite Sam and saying, I, I say, I say, I say, I say, boy, everything's going to be fine. But uh, he he's a fracker. Oh, yeah. Well, he's a... <laughs> and I don't mean if, that as like just a bastardization of the naughty word. If, if you're talking about my opponent in the governor's race, he's a pro-hydrofracker. Um, but uh, he was running against a hydrofracker himself. So, he, you know, with, with it, it was like uh, hold up two fingers and uh, tell people they have a choice. And, you know, you can pick a finger because I'm going to poke you in the eye with the other one. So, uh, you know, you could either pick a hydrofracker or a pro-hydrofracker. And uh, So and the Republican the actually owns a company which hydrofracks, uh, which is... You know, that's where you see the video of someone turning on their spigot and fire coming out. Because, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then the other guy was just a pawn of the hydrofracking industry. So the Democrat is only better by the fact that he's not profiting directly from the hydrofracking. The Republican did profit directly from the hydrofracking and will continue to do so. So, therefore, <laughs> the public, as far as they knew, they really had no choice uh, because, as the more and more effective I've been through the, the the years I've run in 2008 when I ran for governor then I got uh, almost five percent and uh, and this time they they really shut me out uh, every every organization you can imagine uh, who normally uh, uh, is noted for fairness or transparency uh, they were working uh, to to make sure that the people did not have a choice or did not know that they had a choice, whether it be the West Virginia Broadcasters Association, with that always bites me, and I always take them to court, and I did once again, uh, when they take the public airwaves and preempt uh, all major networks and statewide radio to put on a closed-door uh, faux debate where um, it was by invitation only, and this time they actually even tweaked the noses of the press, the, the written press, because they did not allow them into the, <laughs> the uh, main area. And uh, so I guess that, that was the only place I actually got a little bit of, of uh, written words. So we got to back up a minute, Jesse, just for folks in Maine who can't believe this. There have been a couple of uh, debates that went on in the last year in Maine where some of the uh, uh, some of the uh, more marginalized independent candidates were not invited, but but the public broadcasting cam um, debates here had all candidates. If you were legally on the ballot in the state of Maine, you could pretty much guarantee you'll be included in the broadcast media when they do their um, when they do their debates. And what you're saying is, even though there were three people legally on the ballot for governor of the state of West Virginia, you, the Democrat, and the Republican. They barred you from the debates, did not allow you to speak, did not allow even the fact that you were not allowed to speak to be told. Hey, there's another guy. We told him to, to take a flying leap and didn't let him on the debate. They didn't even mention you. Well, that's that's correct. <laughs> they seldom mention me, but uh, in, this, in this particular cycle, we there were four people on the ballot that we uh, we're the only third party that has been on the ballot for 12 years. Uh, we are, if you go on the West Virginia Secretary of State's office uh, website, you'll see that we are one of the three official major parties of the state of West Virginia. 
the particular thing that they were afraid of is the fact that uh, I hold the same views as what is told to be the majority of West Virginians, whether it's on Citizens United issue, whether it's on mountaintop removal issues, whether it's choice, what, no matter what it is. Uh, those people did not get representation on that stage that night, and uh, and, and and therefore the majority of, of West Virginians, uh, by virtue of my exclusion. But it went on from there. Uh, it was the first time in, <clears throat> that I know of in, in history that, uh, since they've done it, that West Virginia public broadcasting uh, did not have a debate at all uh, for governor. Uh, it was the first time that the AP did not do a, uh, a a full uh, profile and interview uh, with me uh, after the last time they had done a, a rather distinct hatchet job against me uh, with a little picture of me and a picture side by side of Osama bin Laden and uh, a complete characterization of how I was a, a conspiracy nut without any quotation marks whatsoever, simply because I'd been endorsed by Senator Gravel, who was at the same time in uh, 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 Senator Mike Gravel. Senator Mike Gravel, Senator, Senator from Alaska, from gave us the Clean Air Act, Clean Water Act, and OSHA. Exactly. Ah. exactly. Wow, what uh, a whack job! <laughs> and uh, AARP did not include me on their uh, their voters' guide, et cetera, then, and uh, excluded me from their from that, which I, in 2004, my first run, I was the only candidate who had a perfect score for their scorecard. Uh, I mean, it goes on and on, and it, and it becomes sadder the longer that I list. Um, yeah. But it is a, it's a glowing example, as usual, that uh, West Virginia is D.C.'s dirty tricks backyard. It's a place for, for uh, disenfranchisement to to really uh, be heard uh, for abuses of the public and, and of the environment. Uh, we're the epicenter. We're ground zero, as you've heard me say before. Yeah. So, so Jesse, just to, okay, but now nobody's surprised that a third party gets excluded. Nobody, you know, uh, although we just uh, elected um, Angus King, which, uh, to the United States Senate, many people would say, well, that's not really electing an independent or a third party individual because he has such corporate backing. But all that aside, he was not a member of one of the two major parties. Um, but, but people aren't surprised by that. The problem with excluding your voice, especially in the case of West Virginia, uh, was the fact. I mean, certainly in in the state of Maine, in the state of Maine, Cynthia Dill was the voice that would have sounded most like yours, and she was the Democrat. Uh, but because of that, people don't know some of the really important environmental issues, uh, among other issues, like you said, choice. No one standing there for choice. No one being against the death penalty. Nobody talking about some of the issues that are very important. Uh, no one talking about being pro Head Start or pro. Uh, uh, you know, a jobs, clean jobs, real opportunity for people. But all that aside, tell us what it means that people didn't get to hear your voice when it came to the uh, the fracking, the hydrofracking, and the mountaintop removal in in West Virginia. Well, uh, an example would be when I've traveled through the northern part of the state uh, this time, which is uh, along Route 50, all the way from Parkersburg to. Uh, um, the, uh, the basically the DC metro area is uh, is where the hydrofracking is is really concentrated, and the the real problem is that this governor who just got reelected had uh, in order to get elected last year in the special election to take this seat of uh, governor uh, now U.S. Senator uh, Joe Manchin who vacated his seat to run for Robert T. Byrd's Senate seat. Uh, Governor uh, uh, Tomlin last year, a uh, year ago last summer, said that uh, just as we were about to have a moratorium in the Senate or in the, the House and Senate, um, uh, getting enough votes for that on the, the hydrofracking issue on the Marcellus, he ended up saying, well, we'll put together a special select committee to study this, and then after they did that, then the, the head of his West Virginia Department of Environmental Protection uh, came into there and stated that there was no problem with radiation in the Marcellus in West Virginia, which is absolutely untrue. And, of course, he was not sworn in, 
to, to give his testimony, and so therefore uh, it was not illegal for him to get up there and, and, Lie. and falsely. Yeah. Exactly. And so uh, uh, then that was trumpeted by the same AP reporter who uh, had done the half the job on me the, in 2010 that I was just told you about. Um, and so, you know, it goes out throughout the nation. It, and, and so what it boils down to is that, that after that happened, the, the press, the legislature, uh, everyone said, ah, oh, you know, big sigh of relief. There's no, no, you know, there's no problem with radiation in the Marcellus, um, as there is everywhere else. Uh, you know, it's why New York has a, has a moratorium on most of its state, et cetera. And so, Pittsburgh. Uh, Pittsburgh has a moratorium. That was crafted. Yeah. I'm sorry. Pittsburgh has a moratorium on on Marcellus Shale uh, fracking. Uh, oh yes, and uh, as to many other places in Maryland, et cetera. But they, but after they they did that, then uh, in December he tossed that bill completely aside, and it was already watered down slightly, uh, not from the perspective of uh, of that industry as much as uh, for the citizens' protection. But he tossed that bill aside anyway, put in a substitute bill that was a complete giveaway to the industry, then convinced the legislature to pass it, that they fix it during a regular session, which is the next month in uh, January and July, or January and February. And they uh, went into that session, and none of the leadership would even pick up the bill to address anything. And uh, we had uh, one rather... Uh, Courageous, uh, who we still have. He's one of the few that made it through this year's onslaught. Uh, who had introduced multiple bills, and then twenty some bills, uh, and none of them got picked up uh, and moved anywhere. So it's uh, it's sad for the people of West Virginia. So I've I've been going into Northern West Virginia. I asked them first of all, you know, a show of hands, please tell me how many people think it's okay that your water gives you cancer. You know, and not not if it will, or but but it will give you cancer. It's just a matter of when. And uh, and and I then relate to them that you know it's collectively all of our fault. The people of West Virginia, we allowed mountaintop removal to continue, destroying entire biospheres and the communities therein, the people's uh, lives and health, uh, as you can see in the act, uh, the the the, the uh, AIC Act. Um, and allow them to completely destroy these communities and biosphere of a mountain uh, and richest biosphere in the world and ship it to China to provide steel making jobs for the Chinese to make the steel to ship back to us. And, and, and uh, important, you know, the, important. The problem is, is that those those folks have, have uh, they, they allowed this to occur even though the majority of people were told to be against mountaintop removal. And that sent a very powerful message to the powers that be that we, uh, as Governor Manchin, when he was governor, pressed for uh, uh, the West Virginia people that we were open for business. And so, therefore, you know, the big, uh, those big extractive industries could come in and have their way with us like the Roman hordes and take what they wanted and then uh, poison the wells and burn the crops and salt the fields. And uh, um, Jesse, uh, we only have about 60 seconds left. Uh, real important uh, water in that area of West Virginia, you're talking about burning children's skin. Uh, people, uh, when kids are having their bath, they're getting, uh, they're getting very, very uh, badly injured. And, and the people don't even understand that, that other people in other parts of the country don't have their kids skin burned by their water that this is not either good or natural jesse we don't have we don't have any more time left today at some point we want to talk to you again though about blair mountain which uh, needs to be a national park uh, but right now mountaintop removal mining threatening blair mountain which is the site of the largest insurrection other than the civil war uh, um, miners fighting back for their rights and they're talking about just destroying that mountain in the next strip mine jesse johnson uh, candidate for governor of west virginia thanks so much for joining us Thank you, and we, we would love to have you all uh, come down here and do special reports. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Jesse. Uh, it's uh, about 25 minutes after.